Hello and welcome back. So we have been working with scripts. This is basically just a text file where we enter our code and then we run it. Those are our simplest programs. And then I got the starting point when you're doing initial problem solving. All the variables are there in the workspace. You have access to all the built-in functions in MATLAB and all the toolboxes. Uh, and so they are really good for early stage development. We also introduce the concept of functions. When you have a particular problem, a particular that, that you will want to use in many different instances, it is a good idea to create a function for it. Functions now have input variables and outputs. And if you group many functions together, in some particular domain to solve a particular set of problems, then you're creating a library of functions for a domain-specific purpose. In MATLAB, we call those toolboxes. In Octave, they are called packages. Different programming languages call them differently. But just remember, they are a group of functions to solve problems in a particular specific domain. So in MATLAB, for instance, you have the signal processing toolbox, the statistics toolbox, the machine learning, the control toolbox. What are these? These are set of functions that were created for solving problems and accelerating development in that particular field. So for instance, now that you are in a newcomer perhaps to MATLAB, you can see, well, what are the two boxes that are there? What are the problems? What are the functions that somebody already wrote to solve these problems? And that, of course, accelerates development significantly. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create apps, applications with graphical user interfaces. Now, uh, why would you want to create apps? And when will you want to create apps? Think of it as... If you're starting with the concept of a script, a script useful for early stage development in your problem solving uh, cycle. Anytime when you have a problem that you are going to use many times, you are probably going to create a function. If functions have functionality for experienced users like yourself and others, other programmers typically would prefer functions in the sense that they have clear interfaces, uh, you can use them programmatically, programmatically, you can add them to your code, right? That's why I was mentioning early on when we went over the input-output module to don't overuse the, the input and output. A, an experienced programmer is going to be very annoying if, for instance, wants to call the cosine function in MATLAB, and instead of being able to enter the input and get the output, put it in the code, the function was designed like to the screen, you know, prompting the user, enter the initial time value, enter the final time value, etc. Right? So when you're developing for other programmers and other experienced users, that have programming capabilities, functions are the way to go. You group them together in a toolbox. But when you're developing for users that are not programmers to solve a particular problem, perhaps you want to create an application with a graphical user interface. And that's what we're going to do here. Now, to create an application, you can click here, a New, and then you have script, function, one of them is actually apps. And there are two ways of creating applications in MATLAB, using guide or using the app designer. I'm going to go over the app designer, which is a, a new integrated graphical user interface development environment in MATLAB 2016 and beyond. A, for earlier versions, you can use guide. So either you click here or in the command window, you can just enter app, designer, and it launches the environment. OK, now that you are in the app designer, we have two views. You have the design canvas here in the design view, and then you have a code view. You have a component library, a component browser, and component properties. So let's create an application, for instance, that enables us to uh, plot uh, signals that we may use. So I'm going to enter some axis here, two-dimensional axis. Incidentally, 
In the current version, this is a new, a new um, graphical user interface development environment. And so far, in the graphic support uh, in this version, you can only do to the to the two-dimensional graphics. So here we added the axis to plot something. Here, notice in the component library, we have the app and we have a um, user interface figure. And you can see app that user interface axis was already created. And then we have properties that we can change. Let's do the placement first. I'm going to place a button where we are going to eventually call it plot to plot something. And let's create some fields, numerical fields, where the user can enter like the amplitude, the frequency, and perhaps the, the duration. So let's do a, a simple app like this. So notice in the component library, we have all the components that we place in the design view. All the components have properties that we can change. So over here, uh, let's go there, the label. You can either enter it here by double clicking, change it, amplitude, or you can click and go to the label, enter, frequency, Incidentally, you can uh, have a, defined, uh, a default value, like you can say, okay, the amplitude here is zero, maximum, minimum. You can set these things up if you want. I want to say duration. And this is in seconds, and this is in hertz. Okay. I'm going to enter here the X label. It's going to be time in seconds. And the way level is going to be amplitude. The title um, signal plot. Okay. So this is our basic design view. With this will be controls in the sense we have edit fields that the user can enter variables, and then we have indicators that will be the plot. Let's actually arrange them together a little bit nicely. Here we have some alignment, so you can align left, you can align center. In this case, it will look better if we align right. And then we, we can apply a spacing, in this case, apply vertical spacing. If you want, you can show the grid, um, you have more control. And you can also click Snap to Grid, that is what we are doing right now. I'm going to take it off for a second. Incidentally, some of these are controls. You can make them indicators, meaning if you don't want the user to be able to enter anything, you don't have to enable that. And so that, for instance, if you were just outputting a result, you will do that. OK, so with that, let's start entering the code. When we place in our campus the buttons, the fields, etc. Code is automatically generated, so you can click here on Code View. And what you can see is that the code for the app already was written for you, where you have the properties. You can see, okay, so this is a, a user figure that is created, sets some axis. You, you, over there you have um, a plot axis, there is a button, there is a label, um, sorry, an edit field. So, so a numeric field here for the amplitude, a numeric field for the frequency, a numeric field for the duration. Each one of them has a particular label. Incidentally, if you change something here, like um, let's imagine that we don't want to call this edit field, just call it duration. This is the component browser. It, notice that it will change here automatically. The code already changed. Frequency. Notice, by the way, that the browser is the same view whether you are in the design view or in the code view. And I'm going to amplitude. Now, this could be created programmatically, but it's just nice that this is done. Notice that it's adaptive in the sense anything that you change in the component br browser, the code already adjusts, then initializes it, creates a function to create the components with the right placement, that is where we place it, each one of them. And now we have to start writing the code. So you may ask, well, where do we write the code? Well, simpler than you think. 
you go to design view. In this case, uh, we are going to have this button that is the pl plot, right? And if we right click on it, what we want is the user will enter numbers in these numerical fields and when we click plot, it should plot them in the signal window. So how do we do that? This is event driven, driven like any other graphical user interface programming. The event will be somebody clicking on the button plot. So you right click on plot, you do that with a callback function. You add the function, you can say add the button pans, uh, push function callback. And when we do that, it's going to already take us to design view. Anything that was in gray was automatically created by the code, and you don't change it. What is here in white is where we write the code. Okay, so what we wanted to do is a plot. Let's start by the end. I would like to plot in this axis, so I'm going to just grab it. One way to do it is you pick it and you just grab it here, plot in this axis, tx, okay? Where x, is a cosine, so amplitude times cosine times two times pi times frequency times t, right? So a cosine of a given frequency, and, um, and so we need to define these things, like a is the amplitude, a, what is this equal to? Well, we have here the amplitude in the app, right? App that amplitude, if you click app, dot, and then you click the tab, it will automatically show you the list of everything that is available, right? So one of them is amplitude. Or at, since you know it's the amplitude, is add dot, you capitalize A, you say, okay, either is amplitude, the amplitude label is just the amplitude. And then we want the value, right? You click, and then you tap, these are all the things that you could pick, right? The value. Again, you could just write it. V, that's the value, okay? So we are picking the amplitude value. F is going to be my app that frequency that value capital T is going to be my app that duration, that value. So I'm picking the value. We could get any other property, including the labels, etc. And so I have everything except that I need to define the t, right? So t is equal to zero in increments of our sampling period all the way to our duration. And so what is our sampling period? This could be another input, like, is this, are we going to plot a dot every 0 0.1 seconds? Every, I'm going to do it so that it is dependent on the frequency, meaning is, of course, half of the sampling frequency by definition, I'm going to set up the sampling frequency to be 50 times the maximum frequency, meaning I'm plotting I'm evaluating in each cycle of the sinusoid at 50 times, so 50 samples per cycle. So let's do this and see if this works. Okay, so we can save it, but incidentally we click run, you automatically will tell us where do you wanna save this. So, I'm going to call the signal plot up. And there we have it. The app came up. And so let's go ahead and enter an amplitude of one, a frequency of two, so two cycles and a duration of one second. Two cycles in one second, plot. There you go. So one cycle, two cycles, it looks like it's working. Let's enter this 10, an amplitude of five, so we should see a signal with an amplitude of five, and if we keep the duration at one second, we should see uh, 10 cycles in one second. There you go. Anytime I click the plot, we are executing that function, and this is a simple 
graphical user interface. And that again, how useful is this to add functionality for an advanced programmer? Probably not that much. You would want if, if we wanted to do create some functionality here, like I don't know, add some amplitude modulation, different types of modulation, etc. Probably you will want those functions created so that then you can use them in your programs to solve your problems, right? But if you are deploying this for other people that may not know how to program or other engineers that the job is not to develop code um, and this is to solve a particular problem, then the app may be the way to go. Now, incidentally, MATLAB has the capability of both for, uh, for all the programs that you create, including the functions, but certainly the apps, to create a standalone executable programs. Okay, so there is a toolbox for that. And so you could create an app that then you can deploy in the different operating systems without having to have MATLAB even installed. Thank you.